We're living in the golden age of gaming, where some of the best games in the world can be played for free. That's Zip Zero Zilch Nada. And while it's likely that you've been playing at least some of these epic titles, chances are that there's a few that you've either never heard of or at least totally forgot about. So in today's video, I'm going to tell you about the best free to play games that are out right now, which also happens to be some of the biggest games in the world. Let's get right into it with an obvious choice. Let's roll. Counter-Strike 2 is easily one of the biggest free-to-play games out right now, and it's fairly new. In many ways, it's Counter-Strike Go with a fresh coat of paint, some new mechanics, and likely another 10 years worth of dedicated support from Valve. If you're looking to get into a competitive esports FPS that's going to be around forever, Counter-Strike is the gold standard. And that's due in large part to Valve refining it and sticking to the game's core values for the past 20 plus years. The gunplay is easy to learn but hard to master, map knowledge gives you a key advantage but the maps themselves are fairly fast to learn, and while the game's economy has a whole meta of its own, it also has some nice tools to help new players get into the groove. It's certainly more of a tryhard game than most, but once you're in the zone and making clutch plays, few games can match the excitement. Halo Infinite had a rough start back when it released in 2021, but these days it's actually crushing it. Infinite's comeback started with the release of Forge Mode in November of last year, and it just keeps getting better and better as the devs pour more time, effort, and content into the game. The latest event was a nostalgia trip for the Halo 3 days with iconic multiplayer maps remade for Infinite in Forge by the community, and a Mountain Dew collaboration with codes for in-game items. Gameplay-wise, Infinite really is the modern take on the classic Halo formula, and it absolutely works. You can now sprint, mantle, and aim most weapons, which might sound sacrilegious to a Halo veteran, but the way that 343 have implemented these mechanics makes total sense and gives the game that responsive, modern feel. Overall, Infinite is proving to be one of the great entries in the franchise, at least for the multiplayer, and it marks a huge return to form after basically 11-ish years of 343 Industries trying to fill in for Bungie. Let's take a detour from FPS to talk about the free-to-play war games starting with War Thunder. This game launched in 2012 and has been updating and improving its gameplay ever since. Starting with a focus on multiplayer World War II aerial combat, it's evolved into a complete vehicular combat sim game with planes, ships, and tanks from pretty much all theaters of war. At this point, I have no idea how many vehicles it has, but chances are if you have a favorite one, it's going to be in War Thunder. All of the vehicles feature realistic visuals, ballistics, damage modeling, and flight controls. It can also handle high-end sim-style battles that you can play with a joystick and even a VR headset, and then it can also give you a more basic arcade like control system. So most audiences are pretty much covered when it comes to just how realistic or easy you want the experience to be. Now, War Thunder is a grind when it comes to earning new vehicles and upgrades, and certainly paying to get better stuff is a major aspect of the business model. So keep that in mind if you think you're susceptible to those types of monetization models, but if you're willing to brave the microtransaction waters, this is one of the best war games around. I should also mention that World of Warships and World of Tanks fall into a similar category as War Thunder. They can be a little bit more arcadey in their presentation in some regards, but I absolutely adore World of Warships, and frankly World of Tanks is good fun as well. Again, very grindy games that really rely on you to buy some of those upgrades, but these titles have been around for a long time and likely aren't going anywhere thanks to their effective microtransaction model. Veering back towards the shooter genre, we of course have The Battle Royales. Apex Legends, Warzone, Fortnite, and PUBG. All free to play and all good in their own distinct ways. Apex is probably the one that I admire the most for having a very clear and focused experience and also a really cool movement-oriented FPS mechanics. And it's fairly accessible considering just how high the skill ceiling can go. 
Now, by contrast, PlayerUnknown's Battlegrounds, or PUBG, is a very hardcore shooter with longer matches and punishing mechanics. I do love this game as it really launched the battle royale genre to the height that it's at now, but it does have a little bit of jank to it, which I guess is also part of the appeal. But if you want a royale that feels more hardcore and more realistic with its gunplay and engagement ranges, then PUBG is absolutely your pick. And then there's Fortnite, which is, well, it's Fortnite. Now, in fairness to Fortnite, they do crank out quality content all the time, and it's relatively kid-friendly, and their Roblox-like custom content creation system has been a huge step forward for the game, and it could help it supplant Roblox at one point. Roblox, of course, being one of the most popular free-to-play kind of build-your-own-world type game, but it's generally meant for much younger audiences. But staying with Royales, then of course there is Warzone, Call of Duty's semi-realistic arcade Royale, which seems like it's here to stay. If you like Call of Duty and the recent direction that the franchise has taken down the remake rabbit hole, then Warzone is certainly going to scratch the itch that only a Call of Duty game can reach. That said, they do like to overhaul their formula every few years, so if you enjoyed the original Warzone, well, you might not get all of that in the current package. Now, again, all of these games are free to play, so you're getting a ton of content for basically nothing, but when it comes to getting a lot for a little, the inarguable king of content has to be Warframe. This is the third person action RPG shooter with a decades worth of content, updates, and a huge player base behind it. It's also one of those something for everyone type games. Do you like sci-fi ninja stuff? Warframe has all the sword dashing and parkour you could ever want. Maybe you're into mobile suit Gundam stuff? They've got that. Into rhythm games? They have a Warframe that works by performing specific combos in rhythm with a custom music track. How about space battles, hoverboards? Yep, Warframe has all of that plus tons of other stuff that honestly I need to really scour the Wikipedia page just to understand the depth of. But Warframe is also one of those games where it's not just about the insane wealth of content. The devs have really spent those 10 years adding all sorts of interesting mechanics and systems to refine and improve the gameplay. Now, of course, there's no way to get through this list without mentioning massive online battle arenas, aka MOBAs. And it's hard to deny that Defense of the Ancients, aka Dota 2, and League of Legends define this genre. Both are exceptionally deep games with a vibrant esports scene, top tier teamwork, and they boast massive communities. Which game you get into is basically a coin toss. There are some differences, but they are very similar as well. And if you're kind of new to what MOBAs are, they're basically real time team tactics games where you control a single character with certain abilities that are augmented with items that you buy as the match progresses. The goal is generally to destroy the enemy team's base, and in some ways it's a lot like a traditional RTS game like StarCraft or WarCraft, which actually makes a lot of sense since Dota began as a mod for WarCraft 3, but you only control your own unit and the economy is geared towards buying items versus upgrading your base. The matches are also quite fun to watch, even if you don't have a deep understanding of the game, and they can really go back and forth with clutch plays and huge momentum shifts. Now for gamers looking for a little bit more of a casual social experience, Fall Guys is easily one of the better party games around. It features several mini games played in a tournament style, and with each round, eliminated players are removed from the pool until only one is left standing. And what really makes the game so much fun is that your character is basically a clumsy blob, so naturally mistakes will be made and people will laugh when you die. That said, there's still a lot of cool mechanics to learn and you can actually get really good at the game if you want to, but it certainly puts the fun factor over the hardcore competitive factor and it absolutely works. Whether it's unwinding with a silly game for an hour or two after work or a game night with your online buddies, Fall Guys is one of those games that just clicks. Rocket League is like a childhood dream of playing with Hot Wheels cars and um, soccer mixed together. 
I don't know why it works, but it does, and it works well. In fact, Rocket League is actually one of the best soccer games around, in my opinion. Not even FIFA gives you the same nuance and control over hitting the ball out of midair. The plays are epic, even from a defensive perspective. And unlike real soccer, it's much more fast-paced, so there's a lot more epic plays happening regularly. Plus, the game pretty much runs on a toaster, aka any crappy computer that you've got laying around. Valve doesn't make a game very often, but when they do, they become decades-long mega-hits. Team Fortress is arguably the game that started the whole cartoony casual FPS genre, which other games like Overwatch heavily cashed in on, and Team Fortress 2 is so old that I bought it in an actual box. The orange box, to be specific. That was back when people were still not totally sure if this whole Steam thing was really going to catch on. And while Team Fortress 2 has had its ups and downs over the years, these days it's a very fun, refined, and engaging experience that rewards a deep understanding of the game's mechanics, but is still friendly and approachable for new players. And that cartoony exterior really does hide one of the most well-crafted and complex hero-based shooters that's around today. Plus, it's just got a ton of hats that you can collect, so I mean, what's not to like? Now, of course, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention Path of Exile. This incredible action RPG arguably forced Blizzard to step up their work big time with supporting Diablo 3 and likely had a lot of influence on Diablo 4's development. And unfortunately for Blizzard, Path of Exile's developers made a much better Diablo game than Blizzard could. The skill tree in Path of Exile is renowned for giving players essentially an infinite amount of choice in how their character plays. It's an absolutely remarkable game that's also maintained steady growth basically since its launch thanks to its exceptional seasonal updates. The game is so good that I'm legitimately worried about Path of Exile 2 being able to take center stage when it eventually comes out. Now I wanted to put some honorable mentions on this list, ones that subscribers recommended, some upcoming games that I think are going to be fantastic, and titles that are pseudo free to play but generally are better if you spend some money. The first game I want to talk about here is the finals from Embark Studio. It's not out quite yet, but I think the release is quite soon and it's an absolute top tier FPS arena experience with destruction unlike anything you've seen before. Now, some of these next games I haven't played, but they have been highly recommended by my subscribers. Genshin Impact is a highly praised and popular action RPG. Uh, MechWarrior Online is sort of a robo FPS continuing the long legacy of the MechWarrior franchise. And Naraka Blade Point is a really interesting melee oriented battle royale, which actually does look quite cool. Now on the free to play, but not quite so free games that are absolutely worth mentioning, of course there's Bungie's Destiny 2, which of course is a huge title. The FPS action RPG game has lots of DLC content, which is the part that's not so free. Now when it comes to card games that you can play on PC and even your mobile devices, Hearthstone and Marvel Snap offer fantastic competitive card game experiences. They again have large and passionate fan bases, but also they're kind of tricky to play without spending any money at all. You can of course play them and be competitive without spending any money. I would say that Marvel Snap is a little bit more forgiving for people who don't want to spend any money and Hearthstone's pretty challenging if you don't buy some of those card packs. Now, of course, there's 20, 30, 40 other top tier games that I could throw on this list, but I'd be curious to hear what free to play games maybe you enjoy that I haven't mentioned here. Let me know in the comments. And if you thought I did a good job with this video, leave me a like, consider subscribing and hitting that notification bell to beat that YouTube algorithm with me. Next up, check out this list of some of the best games that I played in the 90s and early 2000s era of gaming. It's kind of fun to do a throwback on some of the top tier games from back in the day. As always guys, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. This is Level Cap signing off.